Pua. Pua. Hey guys, it's Flux here, and this is a quick tutorial on how to do a stop, wait, and launch coaster in Tycoon 3. Uh, now, before I even start, you should know that uh, in order to do this thing properly, you're going to want to have a basic understanding of block breaks. So fortunately for you guys, I already have a video on that, so I will link it somewhere on the video here. Uh, so if you don't know how to use block breaks, uh, it'll take you to a video. It is in Tycoon 2, but don't worry, it's exactly the same thing here as it is there. So, that being said, there are two fairly easy ways to do this, uh, that I've at least used mostly there. They're the most reliable, and I'm sure there are other ways to do it, but these are probably the, the, the things that I've found to be the easiest. Okay, so jumping right in, we're gonna go to the first, uh, option for a powered launch coaster. Uh, we're gonna wanna go with the extended coaster, is usually the best one. Although, you can probably try and use the twister coaster, but I would recommend the extended coaster, it's probably the best one. Uh, and we're gonna start off here with the basic five block station right here just like that uh, and from there we're going to want to go out about at least five blocks before the block break uh, you can do more or less uh, i would recommend having the area between the actual station and the launch section uh, as small as possible just so that you can time it better uh, so here we are um, this is going to be the holding section so i'm going to make it about 13 miles per hour in block breaks uh, this is going to hold the car before it actually goes to the launch pad so now we're going to have a little turn around here just like this and head into the launch area. So right off the bat, you want to use uh, a brake to slow down the car. Uh, I would recommend you know, just a six or something would be fine. Uh, and then grab the block brakes and here's where it gets interesting. So we're going to want to take this thing all the way up to the maximum speed of 67 miles per hour. Uh, and we're going to do at least five of these or four of these depending on how long your car is. I'm going to do five because it's usually the best way. Uh, and from there we can go ahead and make our actual coaster. So I'm not going to make an actual coaster. I'm just going to quickly do a little like thing. It, it, the goal is just to make it uh, simulate the length of a real coaster. Um, so some hills to kind of slow the car down a bit would be best. We'll just do two of them here like this. And then do a little turnaround like this. Alrighty. And then move into the brake section. So, um, I will just share with you now what I actually like to use for brakes. I usually go down to the 22 mile per hour. I'll do two of these and then I'll drop down by one each time. And just as a gradual braking section. Um, and I'll usually go down to eight. And then from there we can put the actual block section in itself. Um, that will be at 13, which is usually the, the default for me. I usually use 13. Um, now from there, you could add a second station if you wanted to, or maybe a second block section for holding more cars. I'm just going to make it, make it go straight ahead uh, right to the station. Uh, let's go ahead and put down the entrance and exit, and I can show you now what exactly we want to do next. So make sure, this is very important, that you go to the gearbox section here in operating mode and go to block section and enable this. Now, by doing that, we are activating the block section mode, which means that instead of the block section just holding the car at the speed that it says, it will actually stop the car and make sure each car is through the section before going, as all block sections have worked ever in the past. So, um, now we're going to go down to cars. I usually like to use the twister car just because I think it looks the coolest. We'll go there now, uh, max out the car length. Um, and now we can go ahead and you'll, you'll, you'll notice if you've used block brakes before, um, you can put cars outside of the station, and that is where they are sitting on the block, uh, the block section. So, um, now we can go ahead and test this thing. And as you'll see, each one's going to move ahead like block brakes normally do. But once we reach this one, it's going to power launch it um, at 67 miles an hour. Now, uh, unfortunately, it is a cap of 67 miles an hour, which isn't very fast. Uh, usually the best way to combat that is to just put down the uh, booster lift hills that's usually the fastest way in my opinion to do it um now wait a second here i did make a very easy rookie mistake let's see here now watch this this is gonna oh yeah it's gonna instantly power launch um the reason why that happened is because this is too short of a track for it to have a stop in the stop weight launch coaster so if you want it to stop you're gonna have to time it correctly i'm not gonna remake it because it'll take too long but um, if you make this long enough, then this thing won't get past this thing before this gets here, like I was saying earlier, and it will actually stop here and wait for it to launch before it launches, just like these are doing here. Um, like I said, though, you can use the launch lift hill after this to make it go a bit faster, like I usually do. 
Um, and it is going faster than you think it is. It's not going that slow. Um, I think that when you're in the outer view, it looks very slow. I can actually go into the into the cam now, so you can see how fast it really goes. It's a decent speed. Uh, let's go now. Um, but it's not anything that you probably want to use if you're going to make a very long coaster uh, with lots of inversions and whatnot. So I would recommend using either the launch pads, um, like I was saying, the launch lift hill, or the second option, which I'll get to now. All right, so this is the second option in the powered launch tutorial. Um, this one is a bit more complicated, but uh, basically the exact same thing in terms of layout to the first section. So uh, the difference is we're going to be using a um, one of an exploit in the actual game in that you can go over here and when we open the, uh, the park right here, get some random guests just to spawn for like a split second and then I'll pause it. You know, I may need to have a Oh, no, we're good. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and open this guy's name. Now, you're going to go over to his information, and in this section, we're going to type in David Braben. Just like I typed it right here, D-A-V-I-D-B-R-A-B-E-N. That is David Braben. And once I type that in and close, now, when it play, I'll just close this again. It doesn't even matter if he leaves. I can go over here and where it will say chain lift speed there's actually now no cap so i can go infinitely fast in chain lift speed uh, i would recommend something like 70 miles an hour um this is a bit of a weird way to do the launch only because whenever you uh, you'll see in a minute whenever you use this it will um not necessarily launch at that speed so now we're going to go back in here to our coaster editor and head over to our launch section so instead of having what we had before, where we have the block breaks going up to whatever, uh, we're going to go this far, and then we're going to put one chain lift, and then the flat. Um, now, when we go back out here again, and we have the block breaks enabled, now this is the difference between Tycoon 3 and Tycoon 2 that makes this possible. Um, in Tycoon 2, the only time chain lift ever uh, counted as a block break section was if it was going over a little hill. But in this game, any time you have chain left, it counts as a block break section. So uh, this will actually work as block breaks. So if we go now to this, you will see it is now working just fine. And whenever we have the actual launch section, it should launch significantly faster than it does before. Although I did put it at 70, which isn't that much faster. Uh, you'll notice it is faster, though, uh, than the first time if you watch it the first time. Uh, I can make it even faster than that, obviously, by turning it up. Although I have noticed that it does eventually cap... Uh, around a hundred until you make a second one here uh, now here's the thing to be worried about and it happens whether you have one or two um, whenever it goes up you'll see it kind of does a little like launch that's because unlike the block breaks where it will actually stop and it will slowly coast over to the stop it will actually accelerate at that speed till it's the end and then stop so I'll show you what it looks like in the coaster cam when I go back oh here we go it's gonna be right on time um, the actual coaster cam itself, it will actually have a bit of a jerky little, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, that was actually also the block breaks combined with it because the uh, the car was, but yeah, you'll see it. It, um, it is much faster, but it's a bit jerky in the stop section. I would only recommend using one, if anything, uh, but personally, I'd rather go with the other one where you just have block breaks and a lift hill. Um, so those are the two most common ways to make a launch coaster without using the LIM launch coaster. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you guys. Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.